welcome back. This is the morning brief, and you know we never end this show without talking about the entertainment side of things. And we have a big fish, as they call, in the house today. Well, a lot of people are asking, where has Rugged Man been? We do not know, but he's here, live, to talk about where he has been what he's doing presently, and of course, what the future holds for him. Michael Ugochuku Stevens, Rogedi Baba, it's good to have you in the studio. Good morning, it's good to be here. Good morning. Good to have you. We call you Rogedi Baba, but it's actually Rugged Man. Rugged Man, <laughs> but, but, but I mean, it's just smoother to call Rogedi Baba. <laughs> yeah, it's actually the title of my third album, right. which kind of like just became like, but you know how Lagos is, if your name is Shegu, it's Shege Baba. If it's uh, <laughs> Kemi Kemo Mama. Or Tu Baba. Or Tu Baba, so. <laughs> But anyway, so let's answer that question. What have you been up to? A lot. I've been up to a lot, actually. Yes, I know that at some point I kind of like slowed down on music, you know, but... Uh, Is there a reason for that? Uh, if I say it, you probably laugh, though. I got a bit bored. Wow. I got a bit bored at some point. <laughs> See the look on his face? I got a bit bored at some point, but that was just before um, the industry took a turn for the better. Mm. You understand? I got a bit bored. There was so much piracy going on and all. You weren't really getting what you were supposed to be getting, you know, as a, as a creative. So I got a bit bored, actually. And then uh, I wouldn't say I switched, but I started doing more movies. Uh, I haven't done a lot, but at least I'm happy to have some major movies on Netflix and on Prime. And um, yes, of course, anybody that knows me knows I've been doing a lot of humanitarian work. I kind of focused on that for some time. So I did that. I've been doing that for like 10, 11 years now, you know, and uh, finally registered my NGO, though I haven't stuck, kicked off anything on it yet but i've just been doing everything i've been doing to the extent that um i started a radio show that's been on for like three years now it's called waiting day with rugged man basically it's uh i call it the only democratic radio show that is to mind me because i i say it's a show for the people of the people and by the people because it's basically about um i see a lot of nigerians out there who have issues but they don't know where to go to who to go to or how to go about anything and i you know we've seen sad cases where just a phone call or the right words being said would have saved somebody jail time you understand but and the end but they end up in jail so what i do is during the show we call out numbers you know the show is about people calling in or if you, i always say if you either you call in as you're listening or if you know somebody who has certain issues just give them these numbers so what i do is connect the people to proper police uh to lawyers who can take up their cases pro bono um if they need human rights organizations and all of that that's what i've been doing a lot of for the past 10 11 years now and that's that's cool rugged man you know um Thank you for using your star power, you know, to deploy to humanitarian work and helping people. You know, but uh, if we followed your trajectory, uh, excellent rapper, you have a clothing line. Yes, that, I believe. That, is, is that COVID active? put that on hold, but I'm working on bringing it back now. Um, add that to your add activism to all of that. And then you added skits making. You've talked about your movies as well. Yeah. It's as if there's a certain restlessness to you. But <laughs> I'm, what, I'm even about end, to start producing a TV game? series. <laughs> <laughs> what's the end game? Tell us. Well, the end. There's really no end game. As, as far as I'm concerned, if you're a creative, it, it cannot end. Or you're looking to which would make you your first million dollars. <laughs> no, I'm, look, I'm looking at just creating more stuff, creating more, uh, extending the legacy or increasing the legacy, you understand. Like you rightfully said, movies, music, fashion, uh, uh, yeah, music, movies, fashion, activism, radio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, actually, I had a, I, I, start, I think I almost practically started podcasting and mine was even on TV. At some point, I was syndicating to three different uh, TV stations and all, but I was funding everything myself, so I had to s choose one between radio and TV. So I picked radio, and it's live on radio. You know, so I'm just, it, I just love, I love what I do, 
I love what I do, and now uh, this. <laughs> and it speaks to it, right? <laughs> okay, basically, this now, the new EP is called The Michael Stevens Experiment. Okay. And that's why you see me. If you can see what I'm holding, there's rap there, there's R&B, there's um, Fuji, Juju, Zanku. So basically, what this is showing is uh, my professor, you know, mixing stuff. Because mm. it's called the Michael Stevens Experiment because I'm experimenting with different genres of music. I'm known for rap. Right. But if you listen to this EP, there's rap. There's Afro beats, there's Ama Piano, and then the one that's shocking a lot of people right now, the fourth track on this EP is called Found Love. I didn't rap, I sang. Oh. Oh. Not only, no, no, see, let me, let me make it worse. Not only did I sing, it's a love song. So it was gangster slow. fell in love. Yes. Very unusual. <laughs> every gangster falls in love. Don't worry. Every, behind every hard man is a There's woman that that's pulling that his ear yeah, and has a uh, hand, that kind of thing. Yeah. So, so. And I think this uh, just talks about what you've all also been up to, really. Just experiment and doing different yeah. things. It's not radio, it's movies, it's here mm -hmm. and there. And I see some names of this. I see Whiskey. I see Burner Boy, David O, mm. would you, you had to put all those mm. names there so they don't You're come the, for you, obviously. No, 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 but no, no. There's even okay, Portable there. Yeah, of course. Portable <laughs> <part of there. laughs> no, but see, what I'm trying to say is like an equation, it's like, okay, Portable's done this, Burner Boy's done this, Whiskey, David O, mm, as an old cat, I'm like, okay, let's see how we can like mix all this, take a bit of sample here and there, just mix it up. That's the experiment. Right, so how do you view yourself, place yourself, or how are you viewed? different angles in the music journey of Nigeria really do you see yourself as the OG that paved the way that has been a bit controversial <laughs> you've called yourself an old cat so I think yeah. that has been yeah, because I've been you, around for a long time yes. so how do you view yourself in all of this equation or how are you viewed generally um, well I'm, I'm viewed I'm viewed as someone who's been in the industry who's been there done that really because uh, you can't talk about Nigerian music especially rap yeah. without mentioning rugged man what i did when i came into the industry nobody has ever done again and i don't think anybody will be will ever be able to do to come out and go against the powers that be that's what i did with uh -huh. and that was not only suicidal like a friend of mine said <laughs> it actually changed the trajectory of the Nigerian music industry. So I was called the industry watchdog. I've been called, I've been told that I revolutionized the Nigerian music industry. You don't hear that being said about a lot of, a lot of artists. In fact, no artists really, because nobody did what I did. Because that single move I made, made a lot of Nigerian artists sit up, stop copying, mm. stop trying to be what they're not. Um, if you remember in Rogedi Baba, the song, there's a line there that I said, the only thing we're going to make them know where your music comes from in the long run is the fusion of grammar, your slang, and your mother tongue. That was in 2006. And every song from that time till date that has been a hit out of Niger has been a song that has either Igbo, Yoruba, you understand? So I kind of like... Um, to brought it to the mainstream that we need to put a face to Nigerian music. South Africans had Kwaito, Ghanaians had hip life. What did we have apart from Juju, Fuji? But I was talking about contemporary music, that's rap, R&B. We really didn't have a face for it. So let's talk about Afropop or what they call it now. They you talked about with, the, with an S. With, uh -huh. mm. <laughs> you talked about grammar, bringing grammar. But sometimes mm. you're listening to some of these songs and it's just beats and talking about the same thing that revolves around women, drugs. Mm. It's the same kind of thing. Why is it? Did the things you guys sang those days, yeah. is it not resonating in today's un, un, artists? Unfortunately, we're, this is a generation of crews. That's what they call it. So to them, so cruise they, is selling. They just, oh yeah, cruise is selling, you know, but they just want to cruise. They, they, I call them the whatever generation because most times you're trying to tell them stuff seriously. The next, last thing you hear is, yeah, whatever, Jerry and they just go back to whatever they were doing, really. You know, so you can't, I don't blame them too much, but uh, at least I'm happy for people like myself, the two Baba, the Blackface, the African China, the Sun in Ages, the people who have evergreen songs. But what they don't know that they're, they're going to miss out on is the fact that, you know, and which is what is sad for me, we're not going to have too many evergreen songs from this generation. Because mm. even right now, most of, most of the new songs don't last the lifespan is not more than three, four, five months. Say that again. Mm, We're not going to have what? Too many evergreen, evergreen songs, songs from, this, from generation. this generation. Wow. But, uh, 
I, I wonder if that has got a lot to do with the fact that there is very little inspiration um, from the OG, you know, um, little guidance as well. We've had cause to talk a lot about what's happening to rap on this set and mm. a lot of the OGs are missing in action. There are only a very few who are still holding the fort. Would you take responsibility to that to an extent for that? Nope. Who Why? guided me? Who guided me? Who told me what to do? Nobody. But what I did was watch the people who were there before me. Yes, a lot of people inspired me. Yes, a lot of people paved the way for me. Anybody who says nobody paved the way for you, you're probably getting it wrong because paving the way for you doesn't mean they're paying for your studio session or telling you what to do. You know, paving the way for you means they've done it. They've actually started a conversation about a certain thing. They've gotten your attention. Oh, this guy can do, oh, I heard he's King Sonia did jam. Oh, nice, I think I can do something like that. That is paving the way. It's not just about giving you money to book a session or shooting a video for you. No. You know, as long as like, say, um, there was this ex example somebody made online that the first person who walked up to a bush and started stomping on it and created a road and passed, made it easier for the next person that was walking to be able to walk without having to stomp on any bush. So yeah, you might not say he has, he's paved the way for you, but he just made something a bit easier for you. So that's just it. So um, you, are, you, are, you are who you are, you are what you do. You understand? No, nobody told me do this kind of music. I, I chose to do that. If they choose to cruise and talk about just women and drugs and sex, that's their problem really. Because uh, last, last, all of us who leave this earth by ourselves on our own. <laughs> Why? Oh. You understand? <laughs> you know. So no, I don't. I don't take the blame for what they do because I. I didn't. Yes, I did. I have some songs talking women. You know, but I didn't focus on that. So why are they not looking at the OGs and okay, trying to emulate some of the things, some of the positive things? Why is it just the drugs and the women? You know, it's quite interesting how. We've come to this point from where we were coming from. So in the early 2000s-ish, you know, Idris Abul Karim described himself as the best in Africa. And apparently you'd be watching and you were wondering, what's going on here? So you came out and that's the watchdog uh, role that you said you played. Uh -huh. Part one, he replied and said, Percy with this uh, elder, something like that. You mm -hmm. know, there was a lot of back and forth. Yeah. And that was really good to see then. Particularly because a lot of people had maybe shared that opinion, but they didn't have a voice. They couldn't yes. rhyme well. So you came, hit that, and both of you were really speaking to the ills of a society. Mm -hmm. Interested, uh, Mr. Lecturer, and that jaga, resonated jaga. with a lot of yep. people. Jaga, jaga. Yep. You came out, you did a lot of things, and that was the height for it. So imagine listening to music, and it's conscious music mm -hmm. you're listening to your headphones. It's not just the, yes. the usual you're listening mm -hmm. to. We've seen Idris come back. And he's done a song. A lot of people said, "Now nah, he's dissing his elders in that music. But a lot of people resonated with it because it's Because of what he was Ill. saying. Because of what he was saying, it, they could relate. That is a reality for Nigerians. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you align with him on that angle. If it's even a music Bro, you want to how is you want life, to feature how is life on. for you in Nigeria now? So is it a music you want to feature on? Yeah, I would. Because uh, 2021, I also released a body of work called Situation. And that it's, it's a body of work for a few of uh, five tracks, conscious music, talking about the situation of the country. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. You know, and um, anybody who doesn't resonate with what he's saying is probably benefiting from either corruption and or whatnot. Because right now, Nigeria is not... <laughs> we are feeling it, my brother. Absolutely. So why don't we have Whiskey, mm -hmm. Davido? Imagine a song like that, Burn a Burn Boy, a boy. Uh, from the lights of techno. Coming together. I mean, you saw We Are The World, how Michael Jackson brought everybody, and that song, decades after, is still transforming yep. the world. Would it, be a, would it be tough to bring them together to do something, a conscious music for the nation? It's something they need to decide to do. You can't force them. If it's not how they are, the kind of people they are, they, they won't. You understand? Nobody told Idris to do it. Nobody told me to do it. Even when techno, um, uh, Ricardo Banks did it with Mbambadi, we nobody told him to do it. He just did it. You understand? It, like she said, she, she thanked me for using my star power to speak, to help people. So the rest can do it. Nobody told me to do it. I just do it because that's the kind of person I am. Mm. 
you understand so the banners and go even yeah, banner did um the is it the beasts we uh, the monsters we create kind of thing so yeah, he has okay. his own you know kind of conscious but not as hard hitting as direct as idris or i did but for them to take that step is something they have to decide to do well you've been very vocal about situations in nigeria or things affecting society so if you were to sing a song now about nigeria take a rap or something about the current situation what would be the focus what is more important to you at the moment what is happening at the moment for you uh, basically it will be just do something to make life better for nigerians really it's not all about policies and policies and talks um, and things like that it has to be you know it has to, and it's i will not lie it's not even about trying to fix one road or the other because even if you're fixing the road who has money to buy car who has money to buy the fuel you understand and nothing is really happening nothing is really working a lot of businesses are packing up and all the, you, well, you're a woman. I'm not saying you're a woman because of what I'm going to say before you now attack you me. You just stepped but, into a pot. Yes. <laughs> yes. Come out to because me. I was about to say, <laughs> have you been to the market lately to buy stuff? You understand? You, do you know how much everything is right now? Mm. You understand? So, you know, and oh, one particular thing I'm going to pick on is the fact that for, with every new government that comes in, life gets harder for Nigerians. Why is that? Mm. <laughs> well, let's yes, speak. Let's speak no so quickly bottom. for. <laughs> all right, but I, I think before we go, just um, maybe you give us a line of that love song because it's in your new EP yeah, and what you hope to achieve with that EP right now. Quickly, before okay, we go. Well, quickly, I'll just say look, they say you use every opportunity. So the Michael Stevens Experiment EP is out on all platforms. Go stream it. Yeah. So well, uh, it has to do with. It's called Found Love. And um, a lot of radio stations seem to be playing that instead of rap <laughs> tracks. But uh, basically, my art, my former artist wrote it back then, recorded it, but we never released it. So I just thought, okay, it starts with a uh, girl, you smile just like the sun. Maybe you're my number one. Mm. You're my one and only. As the moon brightens the night, girl, you they brighten up my life, yo. Oh, <laughs> then I did colo for you. Inside my heart, my baby, now you. And if I don't get money, I go borrow for you. Uh, Anything uh, for you, my queen. Uh, let me be your king. Oh. <laughs> I've turned a lot of influencers and actors and actresses into rappers. These oh, are songs nice. that are going to be dropping very soon. Mr. Macaroni, Jide, Kene, Yabo, Joe. You're going to hear all of them on some tracks that I'm dropping really soon. Okay, we hope to hear that and everyone Definitely. stream that, this, that uh, EP live. Okay. Thank you very much, Michael Guchuku Stevens, Rugged Man. Thank you. Oh. Like I say, Rugged Man. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I guess we gotta go. <laughs> Thank you very much. I want to stay. <laughs> and maybe I want to hear more of that love song. I mean, it's very different from what Rugged Man does. But thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in and staying with us all through the morning brief today. We'll definitely see you again tomorrow. I'm Anne Mwawadu. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. We will be back again tomorrow. I am Bukola Koka. You may not be a rapper, singer, but you can do your bit to fix our nation. Just like Rugged Man and others are mm -hmm. doing. Sunrise Daily is next, so have a big morning for you right here on Channels Television. I'm Kaido Kikuli. Goodbye. <laughs>